Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be looking at lab equipment. Now, in this video, I might not be mentioning all the lab equipment that you use in your lab. Obviously, that goes by a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, go through uh, all these pieces of lab equipment so uh, you have a better understanding of what their name is and what their use is. Okay? So, first things first, test tubes. Test tubes hold small amounts of liquids for observation. You probably know what a test tube is. And also, um, here I've drawn uh, a test tube brush, which you might use to um, clean the inside of a test tube. Uh, watch glass. A watch glass holds small amounts of solids for observation. And it's literally just a, a kind of like a plate, you know, and it's just made of glass. Uh, beakers. Beakers hold uh, large amounts of liquids for observation and brief storage. Um, they have measurement lines sometimes, but they're very imprecise. So if you ever wanted to measure the volume of a liquid, you wouldn't use a beaker. A round bottom flask, um, they're used for dilutions, uh, which we'll be discussing in the solutions unit. Uh, but for now, just know that they're used for dilutions. They're very accurate at the mark, meaning that uh, if you wanted to measure a liquid, sometimes you'll round bottom flasks go, um, they have different measurements. You might, you might have a 50 milliliter round bottom flask or a 100 milliliter. Uh, but uh, whenever you measure the um, liquid that you want all the way up to this red mark here, um, that usually the volume is very, very accurate. So you would use a round bottom flask to measure out um, some amount of a liquid, not a beaker. Okay. Uh, they're also used to heat liquids in water baths evenly because they have that round bottom, and then can, they all can sometimes can be used to store liquids. A graduate cylinder used to measure quantities of um, measure out quantities of liquids. They're also pretty accurate. Uh, they're more accurate than a beaker, but less accurate than a burette and a pipette. Um, so a burette is um, used to measure out uh, liquids, uh, quantities of liquids. So basically, how it works is you just put the liquid in this um, on the top here, and then there's this little spout in which you open in order to um, release the liquid down the spout. Uh, they're used in titrations. They're very accurate, and they're used in titrations, and we'll be discussing that in the acid base unit. Pipettes, um, they're also very accurate, more accurate than graduated cylinders. Uh, they use, they're they used to measure out specific uh, one specific quantity of a liquid, so just like how the raw bottom flask has one mark, in um, the same sense a pipette also has this mark here, uh, it might be hard to see, it's over here. So whenever you, what you do is you just squeeze this bulb and then that the vacuum that's created is going to um, pull up the, um, the liquid and uh, whenever you get the liquid to the mark, um, that's how you know uh, you have a uh, very, that, that volume of that liquid, whenever the liquid is sucked up, is very accurate. In Erlenmeyer flask, um, these are used to store liquids. They're also often used in titrations. They're more stable than a uh, round bottom flask because they have that, um, they, instead of having a round bottom, they have a flat bottom. Uh, stoppers, they can be used to cap off liquids in flasks, so if you ever wanted to make sure that a liquid in a flask is not reacting, you just put a stopper on top of it. Uh, they're usually made of rubber. Uh, a balance, these are used to measure uh, the mass of substances. Analytical balances are more accurate than other balances, but they're more expensive. An analytical balance is typically the type of balance you see with the, with the little door, and that's um, completely sealed off. They're very accurate, but they're also very expensive. Um, the tear function makes it easy to use. So basically what that is, is let's say you have a, um, let's say you had a watch glass and uh, let me see let me just draw this so let's say you had this this day this day watch glass okay and then you had some substance on it so what you do to get the mass of just the substance is that you'd first measure out the uh, you you first put in the in the analytical, analytical balance, you'd put the watch glass, and then you'd hit this um, button right here called the tear button, and that will reset it to zero. Okay, so it'll kind of like set a scale. Then you do you take the watch glass out, and then you put your substance, whatever you want, on the watch glass, and you put it into the um, analytical balance, and then the the analytical balance will. Um, give you just the mass of the the substance because you've already set the scale um, to uh, the watch glass thing is like the tear button. Okay. Stirring rods are just um, glass rods used to stir things. Usually solutions. Yeah. Um, a spatula. A spatula is used to transfer solid substances. A funnel. Funnels are used to pour liquids from bigger flasks to smaller flasks. They can also be used to um, filter liquids. So let's say you have like. Uh, 
I think we talked about this in our separation techniques, but you know, you just put a filter paper within the funnel, and then you'd pour your liquid down that um, the funnel, and it, the filter paper would uh, actually filter out all the things that you don't want, like the solids, and leaving just the liquid. A hot plate is used to heat things. Um, a ring stand is used to hold up other lab equipment. So a ring stand is the uh, this setup right here, like not not the actual uh, not the red part, but just the the stand is called the ring stand. Um, the 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 round thing is by the way is called a, a clamp. Okay. And then um, the Bunsen burners used to heat things. So usually, what you you could use a ring stand for this. You put you set up the ring stand, then you'd put this uh, this clamp here, and then you put the Bunsen burner underneath. And then whatever you're trying to heat, you put on top of the the ring stand, and then uh, that's how you get this. Um, that's how you can heat something. A crucible. A crucible is used to store solids whenever heating them in the Bunsen burner. So basically, you put the whatever you're trying to heat into uh, the substance into the crucible. You cap it off, and then just put in the flame. Um, and then a clay triangle is used to hold a crucible when heating the substance. So basically, let's go back here um, to the ring stand. So what you do is whenever you put the Bunsen burner at the very bottom, then you put the clay triangle on top of this ring stand, on this um, clamp here, this ring, and then on top of the um, clay triangle, you would put the, uh, the crucible so you wouldn't have to actually hold the crucible in the flame. Um, tongs. Tongs can be used to hold test tubes, beakers, crucibles when heating substances. So you could either use a clay triangle when heating your crucible, or you can just uh, use tongs. Okay. And then uh, wash bottles used to wash containers. They can also be used to, um, when measuring distilled water to a mark. You always put distilled water in a wash bottle. You don't put um, regular water. That's a very generic rule in most labs. And uh, because they don't squirt out that much water. Um, they squirt out just a little bit amounts of water, and that's wh why you can use um, them to measure out very specific amounts of distilled water whenever you're trying to uh, measure out some quantity of water in uh, a burette or a uh, a round bottom flask or whatever the case may be. Okay, but that's it for now. Lab equipment is as simple as that.